Welcome back to another SAP Tech Bytes video where we are running through some tutorials looking at how to use the cloud application programming model and SAP HANA native uh, development inside a single project in the SAP Business Application Studio. In this particular tutorial, we're going to see how, how to create database artifacts using Core Data Services, or CDS, for SAP HANA Cloud. So we're going to use the SAP Cloud Application Programming Model, or CAP, and its syntax called CDS, or Core Data Services, uh, to generate SAP HANA Cloud basic database artifacts. So we're going to learn how to use the Cloud Application Programming Model and CDS to create these simple database entities, and how to define database agnostic artifacts in the persistence model using uh, CDS. Now, once again, this tutorial is designed for SAP HANA Cloud and does not apply to SAP HANA on-premise or HANA Express edition. And it assumes that you have pre completed the previous tutorial, SAP HANA Cloud, create an SAP Cloud Application Programming Model project. We already have our project in place and we're ready to get uh, really dive into it. So the SAP Cloud Application Programming Model utilizes the syntax called Core Data Services to define artifacts in the database module. Because this model is meant to be database agnostic, in other words, work with any database, it does not allow you to leverage features that are specific to SAP HANA Cloud. So for this reason, uh, we're going to create two tables using this approach that does not require any advanced HANA specific features. And then later we're going to see how we can also leverage HANA specific features and add them into the same project and interact between the database agnostic portions that are part of the cloud application programming model and the HANA native portions. But first, let's start with step one, which is just to create some database entities. So we're going to start here in our DB folder, which is our database module. And in the root of this folder or this module, we're going to say new file. And we're going to go ahead and give it a name here. We're going to call this interactions.cds. And it's the file extension that's important. That's telling us that we're, that we're creating a file that's going to be cloud application programming model. Now, uh, what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and bring some parts in. One second, I don't think we want to watch me type all this. So let me create database CDS. I've got the tutorials here opened in another tab and I can use the copy from the tutorial. But I'll, I'll talk to you about what we're bringing in. Um, so uh, we're declaring a namespace to put our content within. Uh, then we are declaring two entities, a header and an item table. And there's a relationship between the two. The header has a composition to many items. And the composition means that basically if we were to delete the header, it would also delete the all the items and allows us to do a deep operations, deep insert, deep delete uh, operations, but the opposite is not true. We could delete an item, but it would not necessarily uh, delete the header. Uh, therefore, we have an association back to the header. It allows us to navigate back to the header, but doesn't create that, uh, that kind of uh, uh, deep dependency between the entity that we have going in the other direction. Now, these are design time artifacts that we've declared in this file. When we do the next couple of steps, you're going to see how we build the project and that will convert them into runtime artifacts that can be deployed and will become physical tables in our HANA database. Now, step two, we want to go ahead and create the service interface as well. And for this, I'm going to go to the SRV folder and Similarly, I'm going to create a new file here. I'm going to call this interaction as srv.cds. It's also a CDS file. And I'm going to put some content in here as well. Once again, let me copy and paste this. 
So I'm basically telling it where to go find the data model. So our interactions file in the DB folder. And that's how it knows the entities that we could base this upon. So for instance, um, you know, I get code completion here because it knows what uh, data model we're referring to. And I just want to take those two same entities that we declared in our data model, the header and the items, and I want to expose those via OData in our service layer as well. Uh, so that's all I'm doing here. Go ahead and save that. And now what we can do, we basically have our data model and we have an OData service interface on it as well. I can come here to the root of my project and I can just say CDS build and that's going to compile all this content. And you see it's creating, uh, it's creating views and it's creating tables uh, off of the, the uh, data model definition that we created here in Interaction CDS, and it generated a uh, CSN JSON, which is going to have all the metadata for the service layer, and that was all generated off this Interaction SRV CDS. But so far, all that's really done is put these deployable files into the separate gen folders underneath DB and underneath SRV. If we actually want to uh, send that into the database, for instance, and create database tables, that will do in the next step. So if we were to look here in this gen folder, we can see this is where it's created all these files, HDB table, HDB view. We can look at them here in the editor as well. You would not want to change them because if you, if you made any changes, it would just be overridden the next time that you did a CDS build because uh, it's going to wipe out everything here and, and rebuild it every time you, you do a CDS build. But you can, you can see what it, it generated here. There's no, no big secret or anything. Um, but now we want to get this content into the database. And this is where our SAP HANA projects view in the Business Application Studio is going to be really handy. It's going to allow us to configure our connection to the database, create an instance of our HDI container, and we're going to use this to deploy into the database each time. But the first thing we want to do is we want to bind our project to an HDI container in the, in the database. So I'm going to just come here and click the bind button. And what it did is it went out there and it looked at Cloud Foundry in my space and it looked at all the existing services. And if I had already created the HDI container, I could just connect it to an existing one. But for this project, I have not created the HDI container yet. So no problem, I'll just say create a new service instance. And it will ask me, all right, what do you want to name that generated service instance? Um, yeah, I'll just go with the, uh, with the generated name and I'll say, okay. And it's creating that. So it's creating the service instance in Cloud Foundry, which in turn calls in the Honda database, creates the schemas and the technical users and connects all that up via configuration file here in our project. This is very similar to in the web IDE when you would do a build it was doing the same thing, except it was reading your MTA YAML, and it was actually deploying the content uh, uh, to, to Cloud Foundry to, to run the deployer on Cloud Foundry. What we're going to be able to do here is we're going to be connected to the Honda database via Cloud Foundry um, through the service instance, but we're going to deploy directly from this shell that we have here in the Business Application Studio. And that's going to save us a lot of time because we're not going to have to deploy the deployer and run it from Cloud Foundry. We're going to be able to run it right here from our, our, our local environment. Uh, so we see it's done. It has bound the service instance, wrote the configuration into this ENV file, and now we are connected to the database. And anytime that we want to deploy our content into the database, if we've got any changes, we can just click this little rocket icon that says deploy. And when I do this, I'll just go ahead and do that. Um, now I've never, the, the first time here, it's going to have to actually run an NPN install to, uh, to download the deployer from 
the node package manager, but it did that for me automatically. Uh, and then it connected to the HANA database and it sent all my content into the HANA database and created tables and views according to the specification of what uh, the cloud application programming model had generated for me. Uh, so if we look here, just to follow the trail, we have our CDS file where we define our data model that generates when we do a CDS build all these uh, individual artifacts that that define this you know so we're getting an abstraction here it's doing a lot of work for us to create re reusable views and things like that uh, but ultimately then these HDB table and HDB view files when I press the deploy button are being sent in the database and it's generating SQL statements that will in turn create database tables and views and we can see those now because if I would just come here to um, this little open HDI container icon, I can go ahead and press that button. And in another tab, it's going to log me into the database explorer. Look at that just a minute. And I've got some content from the previous project that I was just working on where I started this tutorial. But um, what we'll see here is it also added an entry automatically in here for this project. And then if I were to come here and look at tables, we would see the tables that were created, the interaction header, interaction item, and some of the supporting tables for countries and languages that we inherited uh, from uh, base uh, cap definitions. And we see some views here in the database as well. Likewise, if I come back here to the Business Application Studio and go back to my shell and just do a HANA CLI, uh, or act, actually I can just say uh, CF services, then what you're going to see is you, you can see here that it created an instance of a HANA HDI shared service instance uh, and uh, the wizards took care of all that for us. So we're not having to create or bind the service instances. It's doing all of that, all of that for us. So now for step four, check in the database explorer. I got a little carried away and actually already showed you this part in the previous step, but just to run through it uh, again real quick, that when you need to open the database explorer, you can do that here from the SAP HANA projects view and just click this little open HDI container and then what we get is uh, the database uh, explorer opens in another browser tab should automatically add the HDI container entry to your list of, of databases here if it wasn't already. And then, of course, we can drill in and we can see our our, our tables. Um, and from here, you can you can see things like uh, we can see the definition of the table at the database level and. Uh, you can do an open data, although we don't have any data in these tables yet, so there's there's nothing really to, to see there yet. All right, so now for step five, which is loading data into our database tables. So let's go ahead here, I'll jump down to loading data, because we've prepared some uh, a header file and an item file for you. So I'm just going to grab this from another location. One second. There we go. My downloads, and I'm just going to create a new. I'm just going to create a new text document. So I'm going to call this header. CSV open that with notepad. Oh, of course that went over to my other monitor. There we are. And we'll just save that content. There we go. And let's do the same thing with the item file. 
terribly large amount of content, but that's okay. There we go. Text document item.cs csv there we are. save that there we go so we've got those two files downloaded locally so now we're ready to go back to database explorer and we can import this data using the database explorer so i'm going to come here to header import data this is going to start a little wizard to import the data into our database tables so i'm going to say import data import from i'm going to say local and i'm going to go ahead and browse and find that file there's my header file And because I started the wizard by wrap, mouse clicking on the table, it has automatically selected that table in the wizard. So I'm going to go ahead and go next. And as done table mapping, it read the header, uh, header row of my uh, CSV file, and that matches the names of the columns. So it was able to do all the mapping for me. I don't need to uh, do anything additional here. So I can go on to the next step. And I can review and say, save all successful rows, list any errors. Yes, let's review all my settings so far. It's just another chance to kind of see what it's going to look like. And then we can say import into database. And what we see here is that it is all successfully imported. There were no errors. Okay, that's good. Now let's repeat the process with the item table. Just do import data, import from local. We will browse and find our item file. Go on to the next step. Okay, once again, it has automatically selected our table, done all the mapping based upon the names matching. Nothing for us to do there. Save all rows and list any errors. Do our quick review and go ahead and say import into the database. And all records have been saved successfully. So we have imported our data. Now we can check and make sure that it's there. For instance, let me just close this. Now we can do an open data on the items table. And there we are, we can see the data. Now, in the tutorial, there's a modifier here to go in and change the SQL statement and add an additional where condition. I'm not going to do that part of the step because that goes directly into the validation of the tutorial and I don't want to give away the answer. But at this point, we have completed this tutorial by creating our data model deploying it into the database, thereby creating tables and views, and loading data into those tables and views within the HANA database.